Pulse School on realairculture.com is brought to you by Saskatchewan Pulse Growers, DuPont Ferguson Fungicide, and Nodulator XL. So I'm here with Doug Fair, a technical sales agronomist with DuPont. Doug, what are we looking at here? Well, this is a field of uh, laser seed peas uh, near Cut Knife, Saskatchewan. And um, we're looking for ascochyta blight in this particular field. Uh, ascochyta is one of a, of a complex of uh, diseases uh, that includes microsorella and ascochyta foot rot. It's a disease that will cause lesions on the stems, the pods later on, uh, certainly petioles early, um, and the lower leaves. And uh, it's a disease that will affect uh, yield and to some degree quality. Is it important for us to know the difference? Not really, not really. Most fungicides that control ascochyta uh, will control microsorella and, and vice versa. So being able to differentiate isn't really that critical. And do you see sort of the same symptomology across all of the pulse crops? Uh, similar symptomology. Um, certainly there are some diseases that attack uh, lentils, for example, and anthracnose specifically, that are much less of an issue in field peas. Uh, conversely, ascochyta is a, is a bigger issue in uh, chickpeas, and certainly a resistance to certain classes of fungicide in, in chickpeas with ascochyta as well. So you mentioned some of the symptomology. Can you go into a little more detail what we're looking for there? Well, what you want to see is uh, lesions, um, again, on the, um, on the stems, the leaves. Uh, they will start out on the, on the lower leaves as they have on this particular plant. Um, they'll be kind of a, a purplish or brownish um, flex or lesions, if you will. And the key thing here is that uh, if the lesions start to move upwards on the plant towards the newer leaves and eventually towards the pods, um, that's when you want to take some action for disease control. So how far up the plant should we be con start considering spraying? Well, I, I would suggest if they're starting to move more than about a third way up the plant, uh, then you're going to want to be a little more um, uh, vi vigilant around scouting. and. Um, uh, if they're starting to get past that halfway mark, then I think application of a fungicide would be warranted, especially under conditions where it's uh, cool and, and moist. Typically, most labels, uh, most fungicide labels, will we'll talk about applying uh, at the start of flowering or during early flowering. Um, and I think that's appropriate for most pea crops. I would suggest, however, if you see conditions of heavy disease pressure, uh, cool, moist conditions, uh, good humidity within that crop canopy, and you see disease starting to move its way up from the bottom of the plant towards the top of the plant, then I think you might want to pull that trigger a little bit earlier uh, for fungicide control to prevent the disease from moving upwards. Um, recognize that you can't always spray at, um, at early flowering. Weather may get in that way, the size of your farm may get in that way, so a person has to make their own judgment call. Um, but certainly the most important I would suggest is, is monitoring to, to see what the progress is of the disease. So under heavier disease pressure, we might end up spraying twice. What should we consider there? Yeah, good point. Uh, heavy disease pressure would sometimes warrant a second application of a fungicide. And uh, what I would suggest from the standpoint of, of managing a disease resistance is to try and rotate away, change your group of uh, fungicide. So if you've used a, a group seven, for example, maybe you want to rotate to a group three or, or a group nine or vice versa. Um, disease management is, is really important. Um, we don't have perhaps as of yet as large an issue with disease uh, resistance as we do with herbicide resistance. Uh, we do have disease uh, resistant um, ascochyta in chickpeas and we've, we've lost one of our most important uh, tools, that being the strobilian class of fungicides in chickpeas. So uh, that's an example of overuse of, of one group of fungicides and we want to avoid doing that in other crops uh, such as canola or certainly field peas. Uh, another management strategy that's really important, um, and in fact at the start of the, of the growing season for peas, uh, is seed treatment. Um, and as well knowing what level of disease that your peas have. You want to choose a, a, a variety or select a, a variety that you're going to buy that, that has a, a, a test for ascochyta um, so that you know it's a low level of ascochyta, a good level of germination. 
and uh, again choosing a, a proper seed treatment um, certainly helps to lessen the, the likelihood that that pea crop is going to get infected by disease early in the life cycle. Cold wet soils are not a great thing for peas and the, the seed treatments help to prevent uh, fungi from uh, attacking that seed while they're in that cold wet ground. Keep in mind that seed treatments only last so long however and, and that's where uh, seed treatment integrated with the fungicide can give you uh, as good a, a, as possible a level of uh, disease protection. Music